Hello everyone, welcome back to Analytical Guy. In this video, I'll try to talk about how to improve the visuals in Microsoft Power BI. So if you can see on the screen, we have this ugly looking metrics visual, which is showing me current year sales, previous year sales, year on year growth percentage, number of unique customers for the categories as well as products. Now I can transform this basic metrics table into this. And this is very important when you're working for the clients, for your company and showing impactful dashboards. It is important to show conditional formatting, various park lines and various different icons to show what the values are signifying, right? So what I'll do is I'll make a duplicate of this old tab and try to change it into this particular matrix table. So let's get started. So what I'll do is first of all, I'll go to my format visuals, go to layout from default style to make it minimal. I really like minimal. It is so impactful. Or if you go for none, this is also not that bad. But in this example, I'll take minimal as a style. And in layout, I think compact is good. If you are Excel kind of a person, you can make it tabular like this. And this is also not bad. Because here you can see for each category, all the subcategories, and then I can see the total at the end as well, right? But right now, I'll just go with the compact one. And let's see how it goes. So once I have made this layout as minimal, it is looking good like this. Now I don't have the horizontal lines here. So what I can do is I can go here. I can go to format your visual. I can go for grid. I can turn it off. This is already looking similar to what we want, right? So what I'll do is first I'll go for current year sales. I'll go to my current year sales from this icon. Click here, click on conditional formatting, go to data bars. I want the data bars, right? So I will click OK. And you can see I already have the data bars here, but I don't want it to be too superimposing to the user. So maybe make it a lighter color. So what I'll do is I'll go back to current year sales, click on conditional formatting, data bars. And instead of this blue color, maybe I'll just make it a light grayish color, which is showing me as a white, but this is good. I can see this is working. And if I sort this on the basis of current year sales, I can see this is how it is. Or if I want to make it on the basis of year on year growth percentage, I can see this is how it is working. Now, next step is if I have to have the icons here in year on year growth percentages. So what I'll do is I'll go again on this year on year growth percentages values field and then go to conditional formatting, go to the icons and here icon layout should be left of data. So I want icons on the left hand side and the style is this, which is good enough. I can change the icons from here depending on what you want and here. Instead of percent, I'll say number. So I want from zero to, let's say 20%, so 0 0.2. That should be, let's say my yellow. And from 0 0.2 number until one, that should be my green. And if it is greater than, uh, and if it is negative, so I'm, I can say less minus 0 0.1 or minus one number less than equal to zero, number it is red let's see how it shows so here you can see for my 15 percent nothing is shown here for 0 0.64 nothing is shown here because if you go here in conditional formatting for date sorry in icons i am missing something so i am saying if it is greater than or equal to zero and less than 0 0.2 and here also it is less than or equal to zero. So zero is in two conditions. So first of all, you should always go from the minimum to maximum. So I'm saying I'll reiterate this minus one, for example, until zero. And this is my number. So this should be my red, right? And now if it is greater than zero, greater than equal to zero and less than 0 0.2, for example, it should be yellow. So if it is between zero to 20%, it is yellow. And if it is greater than 0 0.2 and less than one, it should be green. And we will tweak this if there are some changes. Let's see how it goes. So now if you see here, my 15%, somewhere around 15% is showing me yellow, 22%, 45%, 56%, everything is green. So here everything is green above 20%, 11% is yellow, 34, 30 is green, 0 0.64 is yellow all the negative values are red. So everything is working perfectly here. I can go back here, conditional formatting, icons. I can change the icon if I want to. For example, I want this to be, let's say, this one. And green is with the green tick. And red is, I think red is fine. Or I can say this one. And instead of this, let's say this to show if it is growing 
or Lee growing. And instead of this, I can have just the circular yellow. And this is how it looks like, right? If I go back to my actual one, so you can see here it is the green icon with the above direction and same with the red with below direction and, and circular yellow. Now you can see the values are also conditional formatted. So if I go back here, currently this is not conditionally formatted. What I can do is I can go here, I can create another conditional formatting on font color. So here, instead of gradient, I'll go for rules. Same, same concept. If I say if it is greater than or equal to negative one and it is number less than zero, make it red. Create another rule, say greater than zero, less than 0 0.2, it is my yellow and create another rule if it is greater than or equal to 0 0.2 and less than one. So that means if it is greater than 20%, less than 100% green. And now there is one problem here. I can change this green color. It's not looking nice. I'll go to font color, make it darker green. Now, if you see here, if my growth is more than 100%, currently that's not the case, but if it is greater than 100%, it won't show up because in our conditional formatting, it is nowhere mentioned if it is greater than 100%. So maybe instead of one, we can make it five. So anything which is less than 500%, it is green. Yeah. Similarly with my icons, I can change it to five instead of one. So it will all include 120%, 200% and whatnot, right? And click OK. So we are done with the year on year percentage growth as well, right? Now in unique customers, we just have a light bluish background to just differentiate with other values. So what I can do is I'll go to format your visual, go to a particular column that is specific column, go select the unique customers and from the background color, change it to what you want. So I can just go to light bluish or even lighter somewhere around like this. So depending on what you want, you can change it from here. You can change the text colors and this is how you will do. All right. Now we are done with the first four columns. So you can see here. Also, if you see the headers, these are uh, uh, bold and colored blue. So what I can do is I can go here. I can go to format your visuals and column headers. I can make it bold. I can change the color from this to this. And this is what we have now. You will also see that I have these icons here, but I don't want them. So I want the user to see as it is. I don't want it to be expanded or collapsed. So what I can do is search for plus or minus. You will see this plus minus icons. You can just disable it and you will see it is there. So user can't expand or collapse. But if you want this, that functionality that user can use, then don't disable it. Keep it on. Right. So now we have this. My next step is to add these two columns. So first is total sales by month. I want these a column chart inside this metrics. So what I can do is I can add a spark line on this is total sales. So current year sales. So I'll just go to current year sales. I'll click here, add a spark line. So I want this on total sales. X axis would be my month, right? So I'll search for month in my date table. So if I go to date table, select month name and create. So you can see this is my line chart. So you can see spark lines. But if you go here and if you click on edit spark line, that's fine. So if you have to change it to column charts, instead of going there, click on format your visual and click on spark lines. And instead of chart type line, click on column. So this is how you will get the columns. But I don't like dark colors here. So maybe make it light. If you do like this, you will see somewhat like this. Here, you will see this is what I have done, right? Also, if you see, I have bifurcated all the columns with a vertical line, vertical grayish line. This makes it nicer and easier for eyes to understand what's happening. So what I'll do is I'll go here, click here, go to format your visuals and maybe go for vertical grid lines and toggle it on. And this is how you can see you can increase the width to two. And this is how you will see here. All right. So now we are done with our first five columns. As you can see from here, all we need to do is add the sixth column that is best brand and number of sales. So what we have to do here is we have to capture the best brand. So that is the best SKU uh, for that particular category. And what was the sales for that particular brand? For example, in the category audio, best brand is wide world importers with the total sale of $16,000. That is out of total for $63,000 for that particular current year, right? So this is how we want, for example, in cameras and camcorders 
Fabricam is the best brand with 22,000 sales out of 708,000 sales, right? So how we can do is we can create a DAX for it. So I'll go here. I have to add that particular column here. So I'll go for new measure. I'll create best brand. And also I want to have the sales contribution. So here that will be the concatenation of best brand as well as total sale. So essentially I want concatenation of brand and the sales value, right? So for that, I will apply concatenate X. So that is the DAX function formula that we have. This will take first expression as table, first parameter I mean to say. So that will be top N and this will take the number of values you want. So we want, for example, best SQ that is just one. So it will be one comma and in what table I have to search this. So I'll filter out a table. I want to search in products, right? But I just want those uh, re uh, records where the sales is not blank. So I'll just filter out this table. So I'll say filter the product table where my expression that is total sales is not blank, right? So this is closed. So this table is closed. Now I want to order this on the basis of my total sales because that is how I will get the best selling SKU on top if we do order by descending, right? So this is done, right? Now I will say once this concatenation of this table is done, I will add what I want in output. So I want the brand. So that will be this plus. So I will say, and this is how I can do concatenation. And then I want to separate this with the sales by let's say pipe symbol. It's easier to understand, oh, but, but you can have anything apart from this. So I'll show you that as well. Again, if you want to concatenate, you will do and here, and then I have to get the total sales. So let's say total sales, I'll just write like this. And then we will change how to make it even better. Right. And now it is total sales as this and oops. And now at the end, you will add the sorting option. So that will be descending and then press enter. So it is saying concatenate X special flag is not allowed as an argument for a function concatenate X. So this is my first parameter. Second is this. Here, this is fine. Now I'm adding the brand, then I'm saying total sales. Then, all right, so after this, I have to add one more parameter so as to, you know, separate the lines so I can add the unique care and that will be 10. And then if you press enter, now it should work. If I click this visual and try to drag that, at the end, let's see what we get. So if you see here, I'm getting for cell phones, the phone company. So if we go here, cell phones, I'm getting the phone company and value is somewhere around $17,000. And if I go here, it is 17,285.3241. So I'm getting the exact value here, but instead I want this format. I want dollar sign, then I want to have in K in thousands, right? So what I'll do is I'll go to this uh, DAX again and instead of just adding the total sales, I'll format this. I'll say format. And now after this, I have to show or tell the format in what format you want. I want to start with dollar sign and then I want the format like this. And at the end, it should end with K, right? And then bracket closed and press enter. And once you do this, you will get the values in the desired format. So dollar sign and then value in thousands. All right. Now I'm getting the best brand. So that is number one, right? So if you see and go back to the DAX, you will see it is descending. So the best or the highest value amount will be on the top, right? But I want top two. So instead of one in here, I can just try two and then press enter. And you will see for each category and subcategory, I'm getting the best two, right? But here, you will see for each category, it is under one brand. So it is not making sense here, right? This is why initially I took the best store because for each category, it can be in multiple stores, right? So it's better to take the best store, which sold it perfectly. So instead of this, let's say if I go here and change it to store, 
and here as well I will say store or instead we can say the state let's see which state is the best I think it will give me the online option in all the cases because online is the best for all the products and categories right let's say so if you see number one is online right everywhere because online is the best for each product but if you see the second best we have northwest for cell phones then we have uh, washington dc for computers for audio we have nebraska and so and so forth right so this is how we can get uh, our best brands best stores how we want you can just tweak in this dax i'll share this pbx with you and you can play around and just do all those permutation combination how we can make it even better right now if i go back here and uh, change it to top one instead and press the arrow key and here i can just make it even smaller like this now if you want to change the borders go to general go to effects and go to visual border click here let's say you want to make it darker blue and with some rounded corners and width is two and also you want to have some shadow and let's say shadow is the similar color of this and this looks good if you want to make it center and this is how you can make it beautiful so if you see the old one this is what we had and if you want to compare you can see how this looks like and how your new dashboard looks like it is outstanding so if you just imagine showing this to your client versus showing this to your client definitely the client will love this and you will be praised for that and for explanation purpose it might took me 20 25 minutes but definitely if you're doing it yourself it is just five minutes task in five minutes you are changing this metrics into this and this is a game changer all right guys so this is it for this particular video i will be sharing more videos on visuals and new visuals that we have i'll try to explain and create more impactful visuals to show you how you can change your dashboard from basic ugly looking dashboards into these impactful videos thanks a lot for watching this video if you really like these content please like and subscribe also share across with your colleagues and friends so that i can make more such content for you guys thank you for watching again